Sabu, TNA forever. Sabu, TNA forever. Sabu, TNA forever. Sabu, TNA forever. I'm Sabu, TNA forever. What's up, everyone? This is Big Rat 310 with Sabutini Forever, bitch. And what you saw before was his old intro. I like that intro. I still say that's the best intro in the history of YouTube. And I wanted to use it more. And I hope the 400 subscriber dance intro is amazing. Because I hate doing your mom. I'm not going to lie. I hate the doing your mom intro. No offense. It's not like you're right in front of me hearing everything I say. Uh. Okay, let's get on to the show. I'm going to talk about the... I'm going to be reading ROH's Bitter Friends to Frenemies. I'm going to talk about the first four matches because he didn't see them. None of them were really important except one. Homicide Prince Nana. And a, I mean, a star and a half. Very short. Didn't like it. Not a lot to it. Whatever. Pierce versus Dino Marcos. Short again. Two and a half. You know, great technical wrestling here, but still nothing special. Matt Striker versus Vigil Wimmer. This was great. Three and a half stars, great technical wrestling, great storytelling, their spots fit in perfectly, and this perfectly set up the Field of Honor tournament and their match at this show. Wow, it just fell out of my hands. This show, Final Model 3, which we will review tomorrow, myself, Sebu, and Trademark. Uh, Special K versus the Vaxi Boys versus Carnage Crew versus SAT, your basic four-way tag team scramble back in 2003, two and one half stars. Decent enough. Okay, ready for the review? Our Let's review? Do Let's do it. And Sabu is perfectly audible. Uh, Alexis Larie versus Becky. Completely oh, wasted time. What, what was this? It was like, what, a star? star? I, I'm going to give it a dud. <laughs> that was god awful. That was horrible. I mean, Alexis Larie was very talented in ROH, but I thought she was booked horribly. This was bad. Becky sucked. I'm going to go ahead and say awful. she was awful. 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 Why did, you have to, why did you have to feud with the Christopher Street Connection and Special K and their girlfriends? Or best friends in the Christopher Street Connection's case. We don't want to talk about this match anymore. Not good. We didn't like it. Felt like a WWE Divas match, to be honest. Moving on. Christopher Daniels versus Xavier. To me, the match was too long. It was too long. It was like 25 minutes. I mean, that's ridiculous. This match, especially a match like this. Did not need to be 25 minutes, where the title match, well, non-title match, was only 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, the first 10 minutes of the match was really boring, then right when it got around 15 minutes, it started to pick up when um, Xavier did that bouncing moonsault off of the road and onto Daniels to the outside. That was probably the spot of the match. Yeah, the bouncing moonsault, I, I would probably, actually no, the, the ending of the main event was the spot of the night. <laughs> spot of the night, yeah. Yeah, but this, this was still great. Yeah, it did pick up. And it was fun towards the end. It had some great, some great action-packed storytelling, wrestling. You know, this this whole match told a great story, with Daniels and Xavier being former partners, and they really didn't know whether to like, just wrestle or physically try to hurt each other. It was yeah. great. I really, I, I won't say it was great, but I did really enjoy. it. I'm gonna give it three and three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Moving on. Next we get Derange versus Johnny Storm versus Silk Wagner Brown versus Hydro. I love this match. <laughs> This was awesome. Um, it was a, a spot fest match, you know. Don't don't come for psychology or storytelling. You just want to turn your brain off for a few seconds and just watch some awesome, awesome, awesome spots. You come here. Yep, There's perfect. So many power bomb, hurricane rana, top rope maneuvers. Too many to count. Suicide dives. Oh my god. So oh Silk so Wagner Brown. Silk so Wagner Brown is basically Rache Brown, but like a hundred pounds lighter. But I like Rashi Brown more. Okay, next we get to the non-title challenge match. Samoa Joe versus CM Punk. The first yeah. the first ever Joe Punk match. The original Joe Punk yeah. match. Not their best Joe versus Punk match. Um, not by any stretch. It was good. It was still good. Yeah, I'm not going to bash it too much. I mean, comparing it to the other Joe Punk matches is just unfair. But <laughs> this was still, you know, this was decent. You know, fun to watch for the most part. Three stars. Joe had very short title run matches in 03. 03, he didn't have a very good reign. You know, everything was good. Nothing was great. Kind of like Aries' reign, which I always criticized. I mean, he had a match with Homicide, which I have not seen yet, which was supposedly amazing. But every other match he had in 2003 was just, you know, kind of like 15 minutes or less. Yeah, okay. And, well, next we get to 
the awesomeness. Homicide versus Steve Carino. God, no wonder this was considered to be the 2003 match of the year. This match was insane. This was amazing. Um, some people still like Paul London, Brian Danielson more. I've not seen Paul London, Brian Danielson, so I'm not there to judge. I will say this was better than the three way at the one anniversary show, and I don't know if it was better than Homicide Joe, but it might have been. <laughs> uh, uh, well, t- tell them about the fame, the famous spot of the match. I mean, when Homicide bitch slapped Steve Carino, I believe it was on uh, his uh, whatever side of his face. He lost his hearing sight on that side that Homicide slapped. Yep, and to this day. He still cannot hear out of that ear. Yeah, hear from that out of that ear I mean, because of that incident. He slapped him, and Carino like left the ring and was holding his cheek, and everyone was going crazy. And then they just proceeded to have an awesome match with the use of steps, tables, suicide dives, guardrails, chairs, barbed wire, and more. It was that awesome. I remember. I remember Homicide took the barbed wire to Steve Carino's arm. Ooh, oh yeah. Ooh. It was just awesome to watch. The ending was perfect with uh, Carino's manager throwing in the towel. And then for those who do not know, at the next show, which I did see in a no-rope barbed wire match, Homicide's manager would throw in the towel for Homicide. And this was an awesome, awesome match, and we are both going to give it four and... Four and a half. It was that good. I, I, it's it's going to be one of the best... I think it's one of the best ROH matches of all time. This was just amazing to watch. I so, so, so enjoyed it. We really liked it. Now, an ROH classic. An ROH classic. I mean, it's it's, a, it's only four and a half stars, which is a shame because four and a half stars for ROH is like, oh, okay, that, that was an amazing match, but that does not make our top 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll make their top 50. Yeah, I'll say it'll make their top 35. But anyways, moving on. Loki versus Dan Moff. Main event time. Well, it, wasn't really, it, didn't, really have, it didn't really feel like a main event. Yeah, and it should have left a homicide agreement for the main event. I would have been satisfied with that, but... You know what? My... Uh, tell him about the, the spot of the night. <laughs> my God. Loki kicked, um, what's his name? Dan Moff. Right? Dan Moff. Dan Moff. In the head. So hard that he knocked him out. I mean, literally, Loki knocked the shit out of him. Loki, they basically did what John Morrison does, which is like a springboard kick. And he kicked Dan Moff, like... Right in the temple, and Danimov was knocked out. The match was only 10 minutes because of this, but I still thought it was really enjoyable for what they were doing, and the spot was so amazing that we are going to give this match... Three stars. Three stars. You know, it was fun for what it was. Obviously, not not, not a classic, and obviously, you know, they had to follow Homicide Carino, but we still we still thought the wrestling was decent. Danimov got some nice spots. Now, at the end, CM Punk cut this amazing promo, but I don't know if Sabu saw this or not, I don't think he did because it was in the beginning of the show. Dan Moff cut one of the best promos I have ever seen in professional wrestling. I will say this is better than any CM Punk promo that year. I truly think it was that amazing. He yeah. talked about New York, low-key, and then he talked about his daughter and how he wanted to beat the living shit out of her. He brought the hatred. He was upset. And the promo was very long. But in my opinion, it, it, it is one of the best promos I've ever seen in, in life. I was so amazed and I was just so taken aback by it. That's also why I give the match three stars. Really, go see the promo. Go buy the DVD just for the promo. Whatever, but the the, the, the show was very, very good. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. Homicide Carino was amazing. It has to be seen by all ROH fans. Uh, the Spot Fest was fun. Daniels Xavier was pretty good. Whitmer and Stryker was good. Uh, Joe Punk was fun. The main event you have to see just for the spot. So, you know, was it, would you say it was a pretty enjoyable show? Yeah. yeah fun fun to watch. Really fun to watch. Yeah, Easy show to sit better, through. Um, ROH pay-per-view show I've seen. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say that, but yeah, I can understand that. It, it was definitely better than uh, Final Battle, which we'll review tomorrow. Yeah. I'll, we'll give the show, an, I'll give it an 8.25, maybe an 8, somewhere I'll around there. I'll give it a solid 8. Yeah, somewhere around there. It was a very enjoyable show. And like I said, uh, that intro in the beginning, I want you all to go to a petition, write in the comments, that intro must stay. But sadly, we won't follow that anyways. All right, this has been our review of ROH, Bitter Friends, Stiffer Enemies. Like I said, tomorrow, myself, Subutine Forever, and Trademark69 are going to review Final Battle 2003.
So I'm out on Big Rat 3, 10, otherwise known as Big Rat 13 or Big Rat 310. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Big Rat 310. I say this because I just saw a guy, his book to push entry, who actually called me Big Rat 13. Really? Yeah. Eh, I can understand. I mean, 310, it's very hard to read. But just for those who are wondering, my name is actually Big Rat 310. Uh, that's my Skype name, Big Rat 310. All right, well, yeah, no more blabbering. This is Big Rat 310 with... 17 bitch. And we are out. Bye the show. See ya. Bye. Peace.